One of the key tools of the overall strategic plan is what we call a type 2 treatment. And that's harvesting for fuel management, leaving the biggest, most beautiful, largest trees on the site. We're going directly after the ladder fuels. We both do the harvesting, and after the harvesting, our ground crew comes back in and does a, an incredible cleanup job to reduce the logging slash and any small trees that were left behind. We're trying to arrange it so that there isn't a way for a fire to heat the crowns and move from the ground into the crowns. The long history of various partial cutting and fire suppression in the Slocan Valley has left us a situation where frequently we have an overstory of very large trees with quite a dense understory of smaller trees beneath them. When that catches on fire, we have the perfect fire ladder. It goes from the ground all the way to the crown and we expect to lose most of the trees to the fire damage. Type 2 takes that and converts it to an open forest of large stems with very little fuel beneath them that we believe is very resilient to fire and that will continue to provide values like wildlife habitat, scenic, spiritual, beautiful habitat, and water production right after the harvest and after moderate fires. We care deeply about wildlife, scenic values, water. It's the best way we know of to meet the multiple mandates that the community forest has. It protects ecological values that are present in an area, maintains forest cover, generates commercially valuable timber, and reduces fuel loads to reduce fire behavior. Our type 2 treatment is the least expensive of our four types of treatment that we do at the onset. It's the one that therefore can be used the most extensively. We use it a lot in areas that are accessible, in areas that we can actually extract a merchantable component from the stand. What I really liked about our type 2 treatment is it actually marries uh, economy forestry and climate change adaptation. So it's the type that really allows us to meet our objective as a forestry company, but simultaneously adapt to what's coming our way in terms of climate change. Our experience at CIFCO with type two has been really great because you know 100% of our AAC over the next five to seven years is actually gonna be coming from type two treatments. So essentially, we've moved all of our forestry operation towards climate change adaptation. So everything that we do currently in terms of our forestry activities is climate change adaptation. And that's the amazing thing about Type 2 is it allows you to meet your mandate as a forestry company and simultaneously do climate change adaptation. And often people see those as mutually exclusive. When we think of our provincial scale challenge that we're currently facing in terms of the, the amount of wildfire we're experiencing provincially every year. And, and when we really start digging down as to how big of a challenge it is to deal with that, uh, often we hit a wall. It's like the problem is way too big for us to handle. But if forest companies in BC would move to doing type two treatments, we would meet both of our objectives. We want to create jobs, we want to you know, have the economy keep rolling. We want to bring fiber to our mills. And, but simultaneously, we want to adapt to a changing climate. Of course, if you look at it from a shareholder's perspective, it is more expensive. You are leaving around 50% of the stand standing. You're not extracting all of the fiber that's on, the, on location, but you're leaving behind a stand that's adapted to climate change, you also need to clean up after your activities. It is a cost, but for us, our mandate as a, as a forestry company is to take care of the land in a way that will benefit us now and will benefit us in the future and will benefit future generations. One of the things I love about the type two treatment where we harvest for fuel management but leave a stand of large trees behind us is how we're headed to a snag management, coarse woody debris provision, very large stem habitat 
for animals, birds, perching birds, bugs, small critters, the whole amazing spectrum of biodiversity that needs large diameter trees to be healthy and survive. And they're supposed to be there for a considerable length of time, some of them in perpetuity. We used to call them full cycle trees. They're supposed to get giant, become huge old, old growth stems, eventually die, stand around for a century as a dead tree, then fall over and be a huge dead log. That's the plan for these areas, is they will have that going on. It's a critical component of ecosystem management in a forest, and the type two treatment just sets it up. I think we can easily imagine uh, forest companies around BC being busy for the next two decades um, doing this type of treatment all around the province during employment, meeting the AAC, and slowly bringing the forest back to the conditions that it probably would have been in if we had not introduced forest suppression 70 years ago. So for us, it's a no-brainer. It's like, let's do that across the landscape. Let's do that at the landscape level so that if there is a large wildfire that starts in this area, the landscape's gonna be adapted.